When we think of large animals that live on our planet, mammals like elephants, gazelles, wolves, whales and lions immediately come to our minds. Today, mammals rule the vast majority of the ecosystem present on our planet. They live on dry land, swim in the oceans and some have even developed powered flight, the only living vertebrates to do so aside from birds. The Cenozoic, the age in which we live in, is usually referred to as the age of mammals for this precise reason. But not everyone knows that these furry animals, so familiar to us, are part of an even larger group, the Synapsids. In the past, this lineage included a great variety of animals, very different to the ones around today. They were the first group of land vertebrates to rule on dry land during the Permian period, between 300 and 250 million years ago. In the beginning, Synapsids didn't even look like modern mammals but instead resembled reptiles. Only after millions of years of evolution, some of these creatures developed new traits, soon becoming the animals we know today. Their evolutionary history is one of the most fascinating among terrestrial vertebrates. The synapsids developed peculiar forms, occupying a multitude of ecological niches in the Permian, even before the dinosaurs evolved and survived some of the greatest mass extinctions in the history of our planet. Let's travel back to the swamps of the Carboniferous period, around 320 million years ago. In this environment, dominated by giant insects and huge semi-aquatic tetrapods, the first amniotes evolved. Their name derives from the fact that they were the first vertebrates to evolve the amnios, a sac that holds the developing embryo inside the egg. This membrane subsequently developed a carbonate shell on its outer side that allowed the egg to retain humidity, thus preventing the embryo from dehydrating. Therefore, amniotes were the first animals to lay eggs with a calcified shell, profoundly different from the eggs of amphibians, animals that today are still tied to human habitats, especially for reproduction. The ability of amniotes to lay eggs in dry environments without risk of dehydration determined the huge success of this group. Thanks to these new reproductive abilities, amniotes could expand their range even in the driest environments. The amniotes evolutionary tree soon split it into two distinct branches. On one side, it gave rise to the sauropsids, who would eventually give rise to our modern reptiles and birds. The other great evolutionary branch led to the synapsids which even though greatly resemble reptiles, are part of a completely different group. Their most peculiar feature was the development of a single temporal opening on the side of the skull. This opening was, and still is in today's mammals, an anchor point for strong biting muscles. The first synapsids used this powerful bite to feed on the giant insects that roam the vast carboniferous swamps. In mammals, the temporal opening has evolved through time becoming delineated by a bony bar on the lower part, known as a zygomatic arch. If we touch our face in the proximity of our cheekbones and the temple, we can feel the muscles and the bones that characterize this structure. One of the earliest known synapsids, Archaeothris, was a small predator, around 50 centimeters long, that hunted arthropods. It is from animals like this that all synapsids originated from. Large herbivorous synapsids already existed in the Carboniferous, more than 300 million years ago. Edaphosaurus, one of the first herbivorous terrestrial vertebrates, would reach up to 4 meters in length. Other synapsids evolved into the first large predators. Ophiacodon was a large carnivore, around 3 meters in length, that probably hunted the large temnospondyl amphibians of the time. These forms lived up until the first part of the Permian, but were gradually replaced by future forms. During the course of the Permian, with the formation of the supercontinent Pangaea, the climate started to change. Around 280 million years ago, Pangaea was becoming more and more arid, and many groups of amphibians and primitive reptiliomorphs started to rapidly decline, for they needed large portions of humid areas to reproduce. The amniotes instead, especially synapsids, adapted to the new conditions, becoming the dominant terrestrial animal group. The role of large predators was initially occupied by the Sphenacodontids. The most famous member of this group, Dimetrodon, was the apex predator of its time. It hunted large amphibians and diadectomorphs in marshlands, but there were also many herbivorous synapsids that reached impressive sizes. 
the Kaisersaurs were a group of strange herbivores with large barrel-like bodies and tiny heads such as Cotylorhynchus. With the expansion of these early large land animals, new forms of Cynipsids arose. In the Middle Permian, agile forms like Biarmasuchus, a fast forest drilling predator, first appeared. This predator was part of a new lineage of Cynapsids, the Therapsids. These animals developed advanced features that allowed them to expand even more than their ancestors. They possessed limbs with a structure that allowed them to move more rapidly. Furthermore, they possessed even more differentiated teeth. They had incisors in the front of the mouth, strong canines to tear flesh from their prey, and molars able to chew in the back of the mouth. All these features, along with a high vascularization of the bones, allow us to hypothesize that theraspids had a relatively high metabolic rate, and that they were able to produce their own body heat. This allowed them to be faster and more agile than their predecessors, the Sphenacodontians. In the Middle Permian, these early therapsids gave rise to an incredible variety of forms, replacing the synapsids that came before, and becoming the dominant group. The Dinocephalian therapsids evolved bizarre forms with long snouts and bony bumps on their heads, and evolved giant predatory forms with strange sharp teeth. Tapanocephalids belonged to this group. They instead became vegetarian, becoming the Permian's largest herbivorous synapsids. They also evolved thick skulls, possibly used by the males in fight during courtship. During the Middle Permian, other groups of therapsids diverged into herbivores and predators, eventually dominating terrestrial ecosystems by the end of the period. The prolific anomodonts mostly included herbivorous forms, usually possessing weird teeth. Pterodudons had incredibly long canines, which weren't used for hunting though, but in fights between males, in a similar fashion to the day's musk deer. Small forms even adapted to life in the trees, probably feeding on insects and leaves. Another clade of these therapsids, the dicynodonts, were completely adapted to a herbivorous diet, going as far as to evolve a beak made of keratin. One of the first forms was probably Eodicynodon, a small herbivore that lived 260 million years ago. Initially confined to the southern hemisphere, at the end of the Permian, Dicynodonts were spread all around the globe, becoming the greatest herbivores in their ecosystems. During the Middle Permian and up to its end, other small advanced therapsids gave rise to the Theridons, evolving into new dominant forms. This new group evolved an even more erect posture and feet pointing forwards, an adaptation for hunting fast prey. These traits made them look, at least from a locomotory perspective, like modern mammals. One particular group of therapsids took this resemblance to an extreme, nearly anticipating mammalian predators that came millions of years later. Gorgonopsids evolved relatively long legs and even long curved teeth that superficially resembled the canines of saber-toothed cats. Large Gorgonopsids like Gorgonops and Linus transevia were some of the most formidable predators of the Permian as they could even bring down parasaurs, the largest reptiles of their time. In the meantime, other small synapsids appeared, and they were even more similar to mammals. In the Middle Permian, Therocephalians and Cynodonts arose. They were closely related to Gorgonopsids. These small therapsids may have been completely covered in fur. The evidence for this filamentous integument, which has been found in coprolites dating to around 250 million years ago, is the oldest evidence we have for filaments attributable to vertebrates. At the end of the Permian though, the great majority of life on Earth disappeared, in one of the most catastrophic events of the last half a billion years. Because of a multitude of factors, including strong global warming, over 90% of life on Earth went extinct. During this great mass extinction, the vast majority of synapsids disappeared, only a few lineages managed to survive. In fact, a few small dicynodonts, therocephalians, and synodonts avoided the catastrophe. The dicynodont Lystrosaurus even managed to spread across the globe, adapting to many environmental conditions. After this great extinction event, the Triassic period began, and the therocephalians went extinct nearly immediately, while synodonts evolved into different forms of many sizes, both herbivorous and carnivorous. At the same time, dicynodonts, that were usually large-bodied, remained the dominant herbivores for a long period of time. During the Triassic, all these new forms started competing with reptiles, which, in the meantime, had given rise to the archosaurs that gradually replaced synapsids by outcompeting them. At the end of the Triassic, the dicynodonts went extinct and were replaced by the first large sauropodomorph dinosaurs. The cynodonts instead were largely replaced by the gigantic pseudosuchians, 
the distant relatives of modern crocodiles. Only the smaller cynodonts, which adapted to an insectivorous diet, made it to the Jurassic. At the end of the Triassic, these small cynodonts evolved into a myriad of tiny forms, including the ancestors of modern mammals. In fact, mammals are nothing more than a highly derived group of cynodonts. During the age of the great reptiles, mammals remained small and inconspicuous. Nonetheless, they continued to evolve more adaptations. These highly derived cynodonts adapted to a nocturnal lifestyle, and this also influenced the development of the bones in the middle ear and the cerebral cortex, traits that now distinguish mammals from all other vertebrates. With the end of the Mesozoic, there also came the end of the age of the dinosaurs. With the disappearance of the big and majestic non-avian dinosaurs that had dominated the Earth for the most part of the Mesozoic, the mammals had no competitors and started to increase in body size, filling many different ecological niches in a relatively short time. Mammals the last survivors of the Synapsid dynasty managed to conquer the earth, seas and even the skies in less than 30 million years. During the Cenozoic, the Synapsids, through their mammalian descendants, have again dominated the earth with a multitude of forms. For the second time, the Synapsids have taken their place as dominant vertebrates of their ecosystems. Our own species is also a descendant of this group. Since our appearance 200 or 300,000 years ago, we Homo sapiens, have conquered every environment, dominating the planet like no species has ever done before. This rapid expansion is causing one of the biggest and fastest changes the planet has ever seen. A single species is causing global climate change and a mass extinction comparable to the greatest to happen in the history of our planet. Synapsids, after over 300 million years of evolutionary history, still dominate every environment of planet Earth.